What's up, guys? Welcome to Movie Important Spoiler Review of Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. I hope you enjoyed my non-spoiler review. I had a lot to say, not much positive, but I did enjoy the characters in the movie. Um, as always, if you like what you see, remember to rate, subscribe, comment, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Email nlapola at 1138gmail.com. Now, I hope you have watched my non-spoiler review. Please see the movie first if you want to see it before you see this video. Just a word of warning, I'm going to go into a lot of details. But that's the point of a spoiler review. So, the reasons I don't like this movie, and the reasons that bother me, is it's trying to do too much. You got New Commander who is tasked by Albus Dumbledore to go to Paris to find out why Ezra Miller's character has come back, which doesn't make any sense to begin with because he completely evaporated from the first movie and then they bring him back, which is really annoying. So he's banned from traveling because of what the events have happened in New York, and but he legally goes over there and the ministry is going after him and so on and so forth. And you're getting into the story of Grindelwald has escaped from prison. He wants to do his follower thing, kind of like uh, what uh, Voldemort has done, but just a little tamer, a little worse, because he apparently respects the uh, muggles or non-magic or no magic, whatever they're called. And you get the, you're getting these two stories about people wanting to be part of this. It's basically a call. And people who don't, you know, you got, you know, the Eddie Redman character and you got, you know, the character played by Allison Sudol, who she ends up going with Grindelwald. And it doesn't make any sense because somehow Dan Fogler just remembers stuff that happened in the original film, even though it apparently disappeared from his memory. And at the very end of the movie, Allison Sudol decides to go with Grindelwald and Dan Fogler's character decides to stay and their characters don't really mean much in this movie outside of that fact. And that's another problem with this movie outside of like Newt's commander, outside of Alphys Dumbledore, outside of Newt's commander's brother and Grindelwald. These other characters are just thrown to the, thrown to the wolves. They're not in this movie very much. They don't have a lot to do. You know, uh, Catherine Watterson just feels like an afterthought in this movie where she felt more like a love interest, a fun character and then you got Zoe Kravitz who's playing Lestrange and she has this history with Newt Scamander and they have a love, you know, triangle because she's going to get married to his brother, which makes no sense. And I just feel like that there's so much going on in this movie, you know, that's so convoluted and so irritating. It's like, I don't know if J.K. Rowling knows where she wants to go with this movie because when you bring in the Ezra Miller character who is revealed to be a Dumbledore, which doesn't make any sense. And then you have just like the beast character, you know, the fantastic beast characters, which are just kind of thrown in there to be lovable. You know, they have this big dragon creature who is, you know, you use a little thing and it gets distracted like a cat. And then there's this whole carnival with Nagini, who's a snake that Voldemort loves is his like right hand pet. I'm guessing that's the same character. I don't know, which he turns into a snake. And, I just I feel like there's so much that could be so much potential in this series that just keeps getting thrown out there. It's like the like I said in the non spoiler review, it's overindulgence. It feels like David Yates has been given the keys to the city. He just does whatever he wants, and it's just such a shame because there's, I mean, the best part about these movies are the fun you get to see with you know the characters themselves and the magic they use and the you know defense against the arts and. It just, and then this movie's a slog to begin with. It's very slow. There's not a lot of action until the very end of the movie, in the very beginning of the movie, which can be fine. It does work in Harry Potter, but it doesn't work here. And then you got, uh, then you got Johnny Depp, who is already having issues in his real life, and he just feels like he's bored in this movie, even though he is having fun. And he is a good character. He comes off good, but he's hardly in the movie. I don't understand why this is called The Crimes of Grindelwald because there's not really much about Grindelwald. It's about Lestrange and New Scamander and them going after Ezra, Ezra Miller's character. And it just it feels like it's overwrought with just nonsense. And like I said, there's this whole carnival that just looks like it could be cool. It looks like something that really could be cool. And it just, there's not much effect to it. It just shows you where uh, Ezra Miller and Nagini are. And then it just disappears then you get into the, like the characters of the Lestrange family, and you find out that 
Ezra Miller's character was switched at birth and the real estranged brother, which they thought he was, had drowned in a lake and you find out that he's actually dumbled. It's just, I don't understand what, why the, what's the point in this movie? You got Nicholas, Nicholas Flamel was in this movie and he doesn't really add anything to more than just being a fun nod to the original movies and the Harry Potter franchise. But everything about this movie just doesn't work. And that's really sad. Um, I think the only thing I truly enjoyed about this movie was Jude Law as Albus Dumbledore. Every time he's on screen, he's electric. He's fun to watch. He's you. You would love to see a movie between him and Grindelwald because they are a love interest couple, and it's hinted upon, even though it was J.K. Rowling says it wasn't going to. But they made a blood pact, and they're holding hands, and it's it's a fun. I think the characters, if they ever get like a backstory throughout these movies. I think it could be a lot of fun to see how much they impact each other. Why Albus Dumbledore doesn't want to kill Grindelwald because he loves him. He he finds his it's almost like his better half or his, his um you know his other half or something like that. And it's just it's an emotional impact that doesn't really play well. But the stuff you see with um, Jude Law as Albus Dumbledore. It just, you feel that emotion. I think that's the better part of the movie. I think the character of Albus Dumbledore is one of the best characters written in lore of books and whatnot of my limited knowledge of books, but I think he's a well-written character. I think he's a fun character. I think his deepness between between his eyes and the darkness, everything he's gone through, you see at the very end when he takes the, the, the blood pack crystal that you've been seeing through the movie with uh, Grindelwald, and you can tell that he doesn't want to do this, but he has no choice. And I'm interested to see where it's going to go. But like I said in my non-spoiler review, there's no reason this series should be five movies. I think a third movie and that's it would have been fine. Because you finally got the reveal of Grindelwald has gotten these people, you know, the Allison Sudol character and, you know, all these followers and whatnot. And then he gives, I think it's, a, I think it's definitely Hollows, the uh, wand. I think he gives to him. I don't know because I can't remember. But he gives it to, you know, Ezra Miller's character. And Ezra Miller blows up a side of a mountain. You can see he's going to have a lot of power. But if they're going to expand this to three more movies, then they got to find a way to do it well. Because after the second movie, I really don't have faith in this series anymore. You know, they're doing it because they want to make money. But J.K. Rowling has such an interesting universe that when these two movies come out, the first and the second one that have come out, I just don't see it. I don't understand it. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And it's sad because it's so such a good franchise with a lot of meat to it that see what they're doing here is kind of like what happened with the Hobbit franchise where it just you don't understand what they're doing, why they're doing it. And you know that they're throwing a lot of money at this and they threw a lot of money at J.K. Rowling. And she wrote it. Maybe she shouldn't write these movies. You know, as much of a, as much as I love her as a writer, maybe she shouldn't be doing these movies. Maybe she handed off, like George Lucas did with uh, Lawrence Kasdan. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know what to do about it. I'm not the writer. I'm just a reviewer. But I wish there was more. I wish there was better. I just wish there was so much they could do, but they're not doing. And it's such a shame because. The characters, the actors who are playing these characters, they're perfect for their roles, but they're just not given a lot to do, which kind of sucks. So that'll be it. That'll be my spoiler review of Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching my non-spoiler review. But as always, remember to rate, subscribe, check out the YouTube channel, Facebook, Twitter. Subscribe to them. Tell me below when you saw the movie, what your favorite part about it was. If you agree with me, if you don't agree with me, I would like to know. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video, guys. Peace. Mm -hmm.